Hello and welcome to No Apologies on Beck. I am your host, Rick Becker. We have our co-host, Lori Hintz. Thank you. This is a place where we are unafraid to speak the truth. We will continue to do so tonight. We've got a fun show. We do. We have some um, new stuff. New stuff. <laughs> a little bit on marijuana. Right. Um, we've got a friend, Kelly Schmidt, current uh, state treasurer, who's joining us tonight. And we're going to be talking about a couple of other things, like uh, so something that happened in the 11th Circuit with regard to free speech. Mm -hmm. Fun show. It is. It's going to be a good show today. And I'm very excited about our guest, too. We'll, we'll get to her in just a little bit. But to start off, let's talk a little bit about the Marijuana Decriminalization Bill. It is H.R. 3884. And it reads, to decriminalize and deschedule cannabis to provide for reinvestment in certain persons adversely impacted by the war on drugs, to provide for expungement of certain cannabis offenses and for other purposes. That's the part that always worries me when mm -hmm. they just say random <laughs> stuff like, and for other stuff. <laughs> yeah, always worrisome. So yeah, this uh, it passed the uh, U.S. House of Representatives on a vote uh, 228 to 164. It was uh, strongly uh, endorsed by the Democrats. Only five Republicans mm. voted for it. And, but also Justin Amash, who used to be a Republican, is now independent. Uh, and there were a couple of surprises. Uh, Thomas Massey, yes. strong independent guy, um, he, he did not vote for it. And you'd think like super liberty guy, he would be in favor of. But there were things in the bill, as you said, there were other things that were of concern. And he, he tweeted out uh, that the bill imposed new taxes, created new federal crimes, um, created new offices and programs, agencies, gives more government executive overreach and so forth. So something that he would have typically been in favor of, which is more freedom, if you know, decriminalize marijuana, let's not lock people up as a federal crime right. for something that allegedly has no victims, uh, he still voted no because, of course, in typical government fashion, you take a good idea and then you make it crappy. Well, and you add things on to it. That's just a, it's just a big red flag. <laughs> Every time you see things and other purposes, right. you know, you know that there's going to be things tagged on it. And that's also what the Democrats are famous for doing. They'll make something that looks fairly decent into a complete nightmare. <laughs> right. And I, I think it's, I, I don't know where the truth is going to lie. Is it that it got expansive because that's the nature mm -hmm. of how they always do things? Or what one party does, typically Democrats in my opinion, but what one party will do is to put something in that's kind of unpalatable into a bill that would have strong su public support and to try and force the opposition right. to accept something they wouldn't normally accept. So does expanding government in this, in this particular bill meant to sort of foil the Republicans. I don't, I don't know. Now, this is, is there a history of uh, criminalization that, is there a, is there a history going back that brought this forward? Is there, is there something that we can look to in the past as to what this means now? Well, yeah, I mean, the history for the criminalization of marijuana, is, I found really, really interesting. Um, it, it was in large part in the beginning all about sort of corporatism and favoritism because hemp, which is cannabis, mm -hmm. but it's not the THC containing cannabis. Right. Hemp is a really good product. It was, I think it was the number three crop in the United States in the, the 30s, 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. So it, it competed with lumber and it competed with nylon for different things. Wow. And so some of the industry giants in the, with the competing products were doing their best to squish competition. That had something to do with well, it. Well, hemp has had a resurgence now, has it, it has not recently? Now. I mean, yeah. I, I see that in the news and I know that many, many products, including clothing, yes. made from hemp. Hemp is a wonderful product. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful crop to grow. It's amazing to me mm -hmm. that it took this long to allow hemp uh, uh, to be to be cultivated. That is strange. It, it's just crazy. It just shows that once something occurs uh, as a restriction or as an imposition by government, it takes forever. It doesn't matter <laughs> if it makes sense. Right. So the um, they they had the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, where they started putting big tax on um, any of the cannabis products. So that again was a government way of trying to alter behavior, not only of citizens taking it but of corporations and industry on what they would preferentially use. So there was that tax act, which made a lot of people go to other products, which made the hemp businesses go out of business. And then finally there was the, um, the outright prohibition 
And um, in was it because of the THC, or what is the reason that hemp came out of favor? Do you know? I mean, does anyone know? I think it was. I think it was. Dual. It, there was the there was the whole aspect of the industry of mm -hmm. trying to squash competition, but then there was this other. I'm not sure why or how it caught on, but but the uh, reefer madness. Oh, this idea yes. and and medical experts. We talked in one of our last shows about how medical ex experts aren't necessarily thinking so much on science. They're thinking about who's paying who's paying the bill. Right. Uh, remember Dr. Omalu. <laughs> right. Uh, where where the NFL physicians mm -hmm. supported something that said no, there's no such thing as uh, brain injury. So um, you had people coming out and saying, this is crazy, this is bad. It's like, uh, you know, you'd lose your mind. You would attack people, perhaps commit suicide, commit rape, um, uh, become a loose woman. They had all this stuff if you smoked marijuana. And so I think it just was this movement and, and it caught on. There was no scientific validity to it. And it was just. That's what happens with fear. Every single time somebody puts something right. out there, you don't do the research and everybody gets afraid. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of the same story all now, the time. And do you have anything else for federal? Because I, I was going to bring it around to state. Okay. Uh, that's what I, that was my next question okay. for you, actually, is to find out about what's going on in the state of North Dakota. Because it seems to me that a bill came mm -hmm. and that those proponents of that bill were not very happy with how the outcome came, even though it passed. Right. So I, I think this is really interesting. So the history uh, from my perspective and my time in the legislature mm -hmm. is that uh, I think it was in 2013 or 15, the, there was a medical marijuana bill that came forth in the legislature. I voted no on it because of, in my opinion, it expanded government, it created monopolies, it did things like that. Would I vote no on it again? Maybe not, because sometimes, you know, the, the perfect is the enemy of good. Right. And it might have been the case, because lo and behold, it didn't pass. And sure enough, what happened, there, on an initiated measure, the people of North Dakota said, we want there to be medical marijuana. Correct. Now, what they passed as an initiated measure really was not very good. Uh, right. it, it was not good <laughs> at all. And so the, the problem is that when it came back to the legislature, we had to do something to fix it. Because even if it's an initiated measure, you can't say we want this to exist and it suddenly exists. There's, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it. You can't just magically make something be so. Exactly. So they, we had to, in the legislature, make law so that the, what the people voted on would actually take effect. The problem is politicians get their hands on it and they, they twist it into something that they agree more with. That was starting to have big problems and um, where I, specifically did that change come from, from like legislative council or from from, from, where? from legislators? It okay. started off in the Senate and they changed things out so that um, it you, like you couldn't do edibles. You couldn't do this. You had to keep the number of plants down. There was taxes. There was all all sorts of stuff. Got it. And um, I worked several of the more liberty minded people worked with the people on the House side to say, hey, what the Senate passed is too far away from what the people actually wanted when they voted on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so changes were made. It was closer to what the people wanted. I voted no on it still. Right. Now, wow. interestingly, I've caught, I've caught slack for voting against it. But the thing is, if you vote against it and it doesn't pass, it goes back to what the people voted on. So actually, ah, I was in favor we were hoping, of it. Right, yeah. got it. You were hoping to help. Um, in addition to that, mm -hmm. there were uh, two decriminalization bills. So I put a bill in in 2017. And what it did was say, if you have marijuana, it's no longer an offense that can send you to jail. It would be an infraction which would carry a penalty maximum of $1,000. That didn't pass. Mm -hmm. it, it got a reasonable amount of votes. Um, but then in 2019, a new decriminalization bill came in. And they said, you know what, it's not even an infraction. It's a maximum fine of $200, but it's only for an ounce of marijuana. That got more votes. It came closer to passing in the House, still didn't pass. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the meantime, What's happened, Montana, recreational marijuana legal, South Dakota, recreational marijuana legal, Canada, recreational marijuana Colorado, legal, Minnesota, so, yep, yep, yep. medicinal rec uh, right. uh, marijuana legal. I mean, it's, it's going to happen, folks, whether you like it or not. It is coming. Um, the, the, it, it's already written on the wall. We're going to have to just accept it. And I, for one, am, am fine with that because I'm pro-liberty. <laughs> Uh, so. All right, I am excited to tell you that we have a guest in our next segment, and I am thrilled that she's here. We will have her when we come back. Hi, 
folks, it's a Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a combo that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers, for your years of continued support. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Is your business phone system outdated and expensive to maintain? Most large VoIP companies leave you on hold or struggling through online support and training for your employees. With Beck Connect, you always have fast, friendly, local support. Familiar faces with the know-how to keep you connected. Take advantage of the newest technology in voice calling, video conferencing, and virtual meeting rooms. Beck Connect gives you all the features you need with no upfront investment and no obsolete hardware or software ever again. Simplify your communications. Choose local. Choose Beck Connect. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. I am here with my friend and the state treasurer, Kelly Schmidt. Very excited and happy to have you here, Thank Kelly. You I know Lori's excited. I am. I'm excited. I got to see her just a, a day ago, <laughs> basically. Uh, she was the speaker at the Young Republicans Convention that was about two hours away from Bismarck, and it was super, super great. Very, very fun. You were very, very loved there, too. I, yes. That was a, a wonderful, wonderful speech you gave. It was extremely inspiring. Thank you. It was yes. a fun night. It was. It was very, very fun. We had a great time. So, um, do you want to you start peppering? her with questions? I'm going to pepper, pepper away. <laughs> ready, so, I'm ready. No, I, uh, from, from day one when I was in legislature, I was able to identify that you were one of the very few people in state government who cared about the taxpayer, who cared about the money coming in, recognizing it wasn't government's money, it was the taxpayer's money. money. And I appreciated that very much, and it was since then that I've gotten to know you better, and you've never let me down. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, um, so I'm not going to probably grill you because I don't have much to grill you on, although if something comes up. Uh, but, but first, can you just tell us um, just a little bit about like, how you got into becoming the treasurer and what it's been like and what your ten tenure has been? Well, thanks for that. You know, it, it allows me some time to, to go back and think about you know, where it all began. And it, and it really is a story. Um, I first got involved in politics in 1998. Um, I ran for city commission in Mandan twice, and it was because of a gravel road. I got passionate about something, and that typically is what happens and what pulls women in 
to public office? Is it something that grabs our heart or just really makes us mad? Mm -hmm. and, and this was both for me. I grabbed my heart because kids were getting hurt and it made me mad because nobody was doing anything about it. So I got involved. And, and then from, from city politics to district politics to state party politics and elected party secretary. And then during that time, the opportunity to came, um, was presented to me to run for office. And like most women, we have to be asked. Right. And, um, and so I was asked. And my question was, why me? And they gave me a, a laundry list of why me's. And I had been a committee clerk in House Appropriations. So I really had the opportunity to see how the sausage is made. Mm -hmm. And that was a great experience for me. Things that I learned then have carried me through my 16-year career. So it, it definitely was a learning experience. But then you go home and you have the conversation with the family. And, and um, you know, I, I talked him into it. I, and it wasn't a hard sell. And I will tell you that first campaign, we had a ball. We, we traveled the state. We, we met the people. And we just truly fell in love with North Dakota in a way that we had no idea. Yeah. And then walking into the office, you know, I was so prepared for, my, my experience prepared me for, for the position, but no one could have prepared me what I walked into. Um, I walked into an agency that was using systems from COBOL, which is a 1968 what? computer wow. system. Wow. Oh. Um, we were using, we were using um, printers um, that you couldn't buy the ribbons for anywhere, so they had a stash of extra ribbons in the storage room. Green bar, um, the, you know, the green paper with the little holes on it right? and it would go through. Oh. Um, we would notify counties, cities, and school districts that we were sending them money by little blue postcards that we manually mm. um, worked through. <laughs> um, the computer system was wow. most challenging in the sense that if we made a, a mistake or transposed a number, mm -hmm. we couldn't correct it ourselves. So we would have to call ITD and have them sweep it clean that night and then give it back to us the next morning and start all over. Wow. And so it really was, not to mention at that time, I inherited the worst audit in North Dakota state government history. We didn't have an accountant in the office. Um, PeopleSoft had just been put online with OMB, and my predecessor did not participate in the implementation of PeopleSoft. So while we had been reconciled to the bank every day, the checkbook and the accounting system hadn't been reconciled in over 14 months. Oh, my. That's a, so, that's a lovely inheritance for yes, you. Yes. I can't even fathom what that was like. That is a huge difference from today. I mean, look at the and, difference yeah. now. And now we, we have a team of skilled, I have the best department in, in the building. The team that I have the privilege of going to work with every single day is truly what has made it to where it is. And it's, it's this team, but it's also the people that have come before them that weren't in, that worked through that process and worked through the challenges. And, and in time for oil, I mean, when the Bakken hit, it was like drinking from a fire hose in our office and really being prepared. I mean, we all talk about the buckets in the oil and gas distribution formula, and that has literally changed every legislative session that I've been in office once it was implemented. And it is the most complicated distribution formula in state government. I mean, it really is a challenge. It is. It's and, extremely complicated. And so we went from there to here. Yep. You've got now things laid out on your website, which are clear. Yes. Anybody, anybody in the state can go look up the, the website and see where the money's going, understand the flow. Not that you'll remember it, because it's extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's transparent, which is key, a, a paramount for, for what should be routine for taxpayers. Know where their money's going and how it's being spent. Well, and you've heard me say time and time again, the people's treasury is the people's business. Mm -hmm. And we have done everything we can in our website. And in, we are the poster child for transparency among treasurer's offices across the country. And that's really been our goal, is because people need to know it's not government money, it's not park district money, it's not city money, it's not county money, it's your money. Yep. And yep. everyone needs the opportunity to know where and how it's being used. Do you know, my, my grandma, Rosie, was the first female Morton County commissioner. Wow. Yeah. So she, she, like yourself, was a trailblazer. Yeah. It, her last name Langan, because everybody in North Dakota, it's last name Langan, they're related. Mm -hmm. So I'm well, related. Schmidt, you know, Adam and Eve were Schmitz. Oh. Were they really? <laughs> they were. 
I believe that. There's a lot of Schmitz. <laughs> um, what other uh, aspects have you seen that where you're, the incoming treasurer is going to have an entirely different world from what you walked into? I mean, I'm pointing out things like the, the, uh, the website and, and the ease, ease of access for taxpayers. What else might the new treasurer find that you didn't? Well, he will come into a paperless, seamless, defect-free agency. We haven't had an audit finding since 2009. Um, we, we have a seamless operation. We, we continue to cross-train among each staff so that if something happens to someone that we have completely everything in line. You grab a manual off the shelf and we should be able to step in. Um, and that's why we've been able to do what we do with seven employees, including wow. myself. And we had a, an increase in employees for a short time when we were drinking from that, from that Bach and fire hose. Sure. Mm -hmm. but, but once we've got everything established, we went back to that original number because I could not justify keeping that. Um, and that redundancy is so important too because you're having people out sick and you're having people leaving and things like that. So that's wonderful that you've got those fail safes. Cross, yep, the cross smart. training is vital. Mm -hmm. um, our operating budget for over a decade, my operating budget never went up. I, I kept everything even. And I could say that now that through my tenure, I didn't, it wasn't increased. But with the legislative mandate of information technology, our operating budget was increased, and that was a legislative mandate. So sure. that wasn't something. But we we had a we've had a turn back every biennium I've been in office. That's and, incredible. Um, we're it proud is. of that. We should be. When you compare it to other grateful. agencies, <laughs> yes, absolutely. When we compare it to other agencies, and what's happened since the fire hose has been turned on is agency budgets have skyrocketed. They have outside of the treasurer's budget, skyrocketed. And um, we are spending has, I always go back to, and our, our viewers are going to hear me say this many times over, about 11 years ago, North Dakota spent about $50 million less per year than South Dakota. Last year, we were up to, North Dakota went from spending $50 million less in a year than South Dakota for roughly, vaguely the same number of people to $2 billion more than South Dakota. So somehow, the people of South Dakota are being served adequately with a budget that is $2 billion less per year than we have, but it just happens because the money came in. Do you want, can you, do you have any comments with, because it, it gives me heartburn, <laughs> heartburn, it gives Kelly, me heartburn to burn too. <laughs> Tell me what your thoughts just are. Just because you have it doesn't mean you should spend it. And, and I think one of the biggest challenges that, that we've all seen since the inception of the Legacy Fund is there's been no, um, there's been no goal for the leg legacy fund. The legacy fund earnings have been used and dumped into the, to the general fund, and that's what they've used to prop up mm -hmm. their general fund spending. Um, it, it's just like when we teach our children when they're young about saving and spending and needs and wants. And I think many times, not only has our legislative body forgotten that whole concept of needs and wants, but I think sometimes the people of North Dakota have forgotten because the demands have also um, on what they feel are needs versus wants. And so it's, it's a vicious cycle. And the spending and the increases that we have seen, I mean, and, and just the movement of the dollars, you know, just because it isn't called general fund money doesn't mean it isn't general fund spending. Exactly. There is oil money that has gone into little buckets and they're called by a different name and they get moved into the general fund, but the budget doesn't call it general fund spending because it isn't labeled right. general fund. At the end of last biennium, Governor Burgum's office indicated that there was a 12% decrease in spending. What they failed to indicate was that it was a 12% decrease in the general fund. Because what they did is they moved, as you well know, Kelly, they moved a ton of money out of the general fund into special funds and then spent it from the special funds. So even though overall spending increased dramatically, the general fund spending decreased by 12%. So for me, I, don't, I call that a, a, a lack of uh, honesty, frankly. It's just shells. We just move it from one, Peter, one, one bucket mm -hmm. to another. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how yeah. it's done. And then because we call it by a different name, we feel that we, we make it okay. Right. right. And it, can, you, um, can you hang on for one more segment? I'd love to. Awesome.
Okay, we are going to be back in just a minute with Kelly Schmidt. We're gonna drill her. <laughs> drill her this time around. Hang on, we'll be right back. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers, for your years of continued support. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is the Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with the Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Welcome back to No Apologies on Back with Becker. That's me, our co-host Lori Hintz. Thank you. This is your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Kelly Schmidt, our current treasurer, is back. She has agreed to talk with us a little bit more. Who knows why? Um, <laughs> so let's talk some more. I've got some questions for you. These are, those were the, the, the first ones were softballs. So this is Jeopardy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Please, please answer in the form of a question. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how to phrase it in this statement, so I'm just going to ask you. <laughs> there was some hullabaloo off and on over the past couple of cycles about getting rid of the treasurer's office. What was that all about? Where do you stand on it? Was it political? Was it looking for efficiency of government? Tell us more about that. Well, first of all, it, it wasn't just this last few sessions. This is something that happened before I was elected. Um, prior to being elected, the office of the state treasurer had been on the ballot twice and mm -hmm. voted on by the people to be retained. And so I felt as a treasurer that had been elected after that had happened, it was my job to get in there and do something to make him proud of the office. And so, um, and it started to cycle back again. And for the most part, I do think it was political, um, just in the manner in which it was handled. Um, and, you know, that's the naughtiness of politics sometimes. Instead of concentrating on principles, we get more into people and personalities. 
And it's unfortunate because we focus too much of our energy sometimes on those people and personalities. And I think in this case, that definitely was, it was part of it. Um, however, if you talk to some of the folks involved, they would tell you definitely it was to create efficiencies. However, at the same time, they continued to add more and more responsibilities to our office. So mm. it's always just been questioned. As far as my position on it, um, I believe it's important to keep a separate elected body, elected official, holding the checkbook. Um, if it didn't go to, the, if we didn't have a treasurer, it would go to the tax commissioner. The tax commissioner now collects the money, he gives it to the treasury. We either invest it or we distribute it. Um, otherwise, it would go to the Office of Management and Budget. And if it were to be eliminated, the only position that would be eliminated is the elected official because the work still needs still to be needs completed. To, sure. And and that that's for certain. Yeah. So I, I guess it's just a philosophy of do you want a treasurer appointed by a governor or do you want a treasurer to respond and, and to be accountable to the people? And I think there is something to be said for the buck stops here with you in that position. You need somebody in authority because Anytime you get a committee <laughs> to try to do anything, you're going to have far worse problems. Mm -hmm. yep. so. Okay. Well, Our, not to mention the boards that I serve on. Right. I serve oh. on six very important boards. And, yes. and just having that elected official and having, mm -hmm. um, I mean, in many times, there's been many times on the land board where I've been the, I've been the, the deciding mm -hmm. vote. And I think that's another thing. The people have a say, and they have a say every time they go to the, to the polls. And... It's the voice of, of the treasurer that provides to right. those boards. Tom Beadle, the, the incoming treasurer, um, I consider him a friend. Uh, we've gotten along beautifully in the legislature. Um, we're probably polar opposites when it comes to political philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that someone who uh, had their, the election so, so heavily influenced by the governor where he put in all the money and, and helped, perhaps Tom would have won on his own without a problem. I don't know, but the point is the governor put in gobs and gobs and gobs of money to get uh, Mr. Beadle elected. My concern, if I take myself outside of my friendship with Tom, is will he be a sycophant, a yes man to the governor on the land board or any other boards for that matter? Do you think that that general concern, taking personalities out of it, is a valid concern? Um, I do just in the sense that you're not the only person that's brought it forward. I think it's on people's minds. And I guess the proof will be in the pudding. We'll have to wait and see, um, you know, how he carries himself through that. And, and the electorate, the people, will have to hold him accountable. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Third and final hardball. <laughs> Where the hell's the money? <laughs> well... <laughs> Now, for the viewers, there's this, there this subtle. deal that there's uh, missing money. But I, I'm just going to let Kelly well, tell us Well, you know, about it. There, that's one thing that's been discussed is we talked about transparency earlier, and we talked about, you know, where the dollars have and how shells are. And, and, and there's been chatter among little groups that I have little men that come into the Capitol building, and they dig holes <laughs> underneath the Capitol, and they bury the money. And I just say, hi, ho, and they are all ready to go, you know. Um, the, the fact is, is, is when people, you know, we, when people can't find or can't, t can't see where the money is, they make an assumption that something is amiss or something mm -hmm. is wrong. And I think that's why you said earlier about the importance and the value of transparency. We have to do that. And, you know, we, we have so many different funds, the, the SIF fund or the Strategic Investment and Improvement Fund. I call that general fund number two because we, we don't dedicate, we just move those dollars into the general fund and we spend them. And to the tune this biennium, I think we're on track for um, about a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, this general fund budget, we're looking at 24% of the general fund budget is supported by oil revenue. Yep. And, and so- but Let me, let me pull, I'm gonna have, if you can, 30 seconds for our viewers. There was, there was a situation where the buck was being passed between the AG's office, the legislature, and you. And it, it turns out from at least if you look from the viewpoint of maybe the other two offices, that they dropped, they dropped that buck on you. And they did. Yeah, so, so 30 second for the viewers, what happened? Um, you're talking about the Common Schools Trust yes. Fund and the fact that dollars were not being dis deposited in the Common Schools Trust Fund, but were being deposited in the general fund. 
and we had worked, my, my agency and I had worked um, going back to Governor Hoven's office when he was governor to try and get some clarity in an ambiguous law to get those dollars moved into the Common Schools Trust Fund instead of the general fund, but the legislature would not do it. And we had one case where we had an amendment on a bill that had gone to nine conference committees and it was ultimately killed. We had tried for, I'm gonna say 11 years to try and get this resolved. I have an 11 by 18 spreadsheet that can show all the different things that we worked on. But it was very apparent that the legislative body or those that were working behind the scenes on this did not want that money to go into a constitutional fund. Mm -hmm. And those that know me know that I would much rather have seen it go into a constitutional fund because it could not have continued to be spent right. as going to the general fund. Right. And so when this came forward, we had, um, uh, someone that brought it forward thought that they had One found we're gonna, something. We're going to stay on the segment for just a, a little bit longer, so I'm okay. sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. We had someone that brought it forward thinking that they had found something new, and they took off and ran with it, and um, and that's exactly what happened. Um, so what I wanted to do, because I was involved with this as far as trying to understand it at the time, what it comes down to is I hear people, social media and what have you, is there's missing money, and I just want to make it clear. There's not missing money. There was a question of whether the money that was derived from oil revenue was put into the right, into the correct fund, or an incorrect fund according to law. And there was a lot of ambiguity. There was a lot of attempt to clear things up, and there was a lot of lack of of mm -hmm. follow through with numerous offices, in, in, including the attorney general, including the legislature itself. So I just wanted to make that clear because I, I had seen it missing money it's not missing it's where did it go and how do we get it towards it went to the to general fund instead of the common schools trust fund exactly well thank you so much for this amazing visit i'm just excited that we got to have her today on at she, you are by the way the very first guest on no apologies with becker so thank nice. you thank you for coming thank here today you for having me yes yeah appreciate you you bet all right thank you we will be back we're going to have brain food nutrition for your brain and a couple of other little tidbits hang with us we'll see you soon Central, 4800. 4800, go ahead. Requesting social services on call team. Stand by. 4800, social services requesting additional information. You can advise social services that we have an 18-month-old female who was in a residence with a mother now being transported to medical care for overdose. Trusting your digital life to faceless tech giants can be risky. Will they keep your family and business information truly safe from prying eyes? If you subscribe to local Beck Lightband Internet Service, you already have Beck Cloud Backup. Beck Cloud Backup is the safest, most private cloud storage for all your family memories, schoolwork, and business documents. Call 701-475-2361 to start using your free space on Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. 
Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. Lori, are you ready for some brain food? I love me some brain food. This is one of my favorite segments just because we get to kind of pick and choose things that we want to talk about. And some people call it trivia. Well, <laughs> it could be true, but it's always educational. Yes. It is always educational. And today I'm going, my, my two brain foods today are about uh, COVID related things and particularly mask related things. The first thing is, and I got these from, I got these from a mentalfloss.com website. And the uh, new words in the lexicon, we've all heard masking and mask shaming and all of the mask words that go along with COVID. But uh, there is something that is called mask mouth. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of mask mouth, but mask mouth is, well, I read something from the Colgate company, so you can take it from that background, but uh, the Colgate company says that mask mouth is described as a variety of oral side effects from wearing a mask for an extended period of time. So those people who have to wear a mask all day long, some of them are getting mask mouth. It might include dry mouth, bad breath, tooth decay, and even gum disease as you're using this math all the time. And what happens is when you breathe out of your mouth, it decreases the amount of saliva that you have in your mouth. That makes sense. You've got air stuck in there and air all the time. So when you don't have as much saliva, that of course means you don't wash away the food debris and you have cavities and you have problems with your teeth. Uh, wearing a mask also causes you to not drink as much water, which is also not good mm -hmm. for people. Uh -oh. And so dehydration can lead to dry mouth, which can lead to tooth decay and bad breath. So then when you wear a mask, you also trap more carbon dioxide in your mouth than usual, which can increase the acidity of your oral microbiome, which might make you at, put you at risk for infections or inflammatory conditions like gum disease. So bleeding gums and things like that can come from this horrible hmm. mask mouth. Crazy. So that's my first one. Mask Delightful, mouth. I know, right? Mask really? Mouth. Yes. <laughs> That's, it makes Have you ever heard of, of mask mouth? No. Oh. Have you heard of beer goggles? No. <laughs> Haven't you? No. What are beer goggles? Okay, I'll watch. If you that. drink too much beer, <laughs> the people around you can appear to be. Uh, that makes perfect sense to me. I don't think it's the same thing as mask mouth, however. Mask mouth is kind of yucky, not going to lie. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a, a, a bit of trivia, trivia uh, with regard to marijuana. Okay. So for viewers that might be in Montana and South Dakota. Now that you've got legal weed, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're going to be imbibing immediately, uh, there are a couple things that you should know. So marijuana, THC, is an antidepressant. Mm. It binds to the same receptors as a chemical known as anandamide, okay. which is known as the bliss molecule. <gasps> the bliss molecule. I, I don't. I'd, I'd like some anandamide. That sounds great. All right. Okay. So it binds to this, it binds to these receptors and it also, it does another thing where it slows the breakdown of an ad, anandamide. Okay. So it's kind of a double whammy on having an antidepressant effect. So if you haven't tried your newly legal substance in South Dakota or Montana and you do, <laughs> and you're wondering why you're no longer depressed, chemically speaking, that's the reason why you're welcome. So you learned now anandamide, and we're going to remember that. So I'm going to go back to COVID. And another word that is, this one I had actually heard of before, and this is another mask-related one. This one is called mask knee, as in acne from the mask. And people who are wearing masks for long periods of time can attest to this one, too. It is ruining beautiful complexions all over the place. I've seen it. I've seen it already. <laughs> it, is, it is not cool. Facial breakouts are caused, of course, by friction and heat and occlusion, which is clogging of things or blockage that occurs from the mask usage. And it is really unpleasant 
on your skin to have friction and heat on your skin for a long period of time. It's just not, it's not very much fun. According to usdermatologypartners.com, mastinia is a form of acne um, mechanica that causes breakouts in the areas covered by the face mask. So you'll feel, what's horrible is that when you take it off, then you have this delightful area of mastiny on your, on your face. So uh, wearing a mask essentially just messes with the skin's lipid barrier, which is on the top of the surface of it, and it just gives you a horrible, hmm. and it's that rubbing thing. I do think that we have found, however, a foolproof way of actually dealing with it, and I think it, what we do is we just... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. That's beautiful. I think that's gonna work, yeah. because it's not rubbing on her face. So. Right. Sorry. Okay, right, you're that, right. was, that was fun. Um, my last one, again, related to marijuana. Okay. Um, did you know that when they looked up uh, in Shakespeare's house, mm -hmm. he, had, he had several pipes in his house. They looked into four of the pipes. Uh, I should say they looked in all the pipes, mm -hmm. but four of them had traces of marijuana. They did? Yes. Oh, how interesting. So Shakespeare was a pot smoker. And it makes sense because I don't know if you know this, but they're, they're the um, very first... Uh, gra uh, uh, additions, if you will, mm -hmm. the first run-throughs of Hamlet. Um, most people don't know this. It, it, it read, to snack or not to snack? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> and people don't know that. There's another one that they unearth that people are unaware of as far as Shakespeare's earliest writings. Uh -huh. His first rendition in Romeo and Juliet. Doritos, Cheetos, wherefore art thou? I knew it. And so people are not aware of that, but mm -hmm. now, now you do. Good I mean, to know, but that, I can never get that visual of him back there like this ever again. That was fabulous. That was yes, awesome. Yes, he was. All right, brain food. So there food. you go, <laughs> nutrition for your brain. We're going to have that at least a couple of times a week, mm -hmm. I would imagine. It's so fun. next, we're going to be back. We've got an interesting topic from a 11th Circuit Court of Appeals for an interesting ruling regarding free speech. Hang with us for the last segment. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Howdy folks, it's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. 
commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. You are with us for our final segment. We're going to be talking about a ruling from the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, which is down in Florida, Florida, Georgia area. Right. Um, this happened uh, a week or so ago. Okay. And I find it to be a really interesting uh, ruling because it deals with free speech. But it does so in a topic that has an additional layer of significant interest which is um, gender transition, uh, conversion therapy, and things like that. So what we have mm -hmm. is basically that a Boca Raton, the city and the county, had a ban on conversion therapy. Now, not the whole state of Florida, just this particular municipality. Yes, the city and the county, two separate bans, almost identical. Right. And, and they just said you can't do conversion therapy. So conversion therapy meaning that uh, if someone is uh, feeling attraction to the same sex or if they're feeling that they are of a gender that they uh, are not uh, physically and anatomically predisposed to, um, this therapy sort of works with them to um, explain, convince, what have you, look at the possibility that they in fact can control those types of things. Now to explain, this does not have to do with anything more than therapy with a therapist or talking, right. correct? Well, exactly, and that's okay. the key. The key is that it was limited to speech. Right. It's not some kind of weird electroconvulsive stuff. It's not. Right. It, 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 it's it's speech right. and only speech. And so what the, the 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 people, two therapists, brought up as a lawsuit is that look, we're just doing speech, helping these people. Yes, there are studies and there are things like that that indicate that this is not necessarily a good thing. However, it's only speech. They brought it up in the context mm -hmm. of the fact that the city and county explicitly allowed for therapy regarding gender transition. So that was speech which was allowed mm -hmm. and the speech for conversion was not allowed. And uh, what, what they found was that, in essence what they proposed was that people on the left were agreeing with, with, and it wanted government to support speech they agreed with right. and wanted government to squash legally speech they disagreed with. Exactly, and the 11th Circuit ruled two to one that this conversion therapy is indeed protected speech under the First Amendment, which is so nice to hear. Yep, See, and what we have to realize, if whether it doesn't, in my own opinion, this is all about free speech. Right. It doesn't matter whether you agree with, with conversion therapy or not, because if, even if you are a person who is adamantly opposed to conversion therapy, the point is, if a local government can ban speech for a process, a, a, a whatever it is that you disagree with, they can ban it the other way. So they could ban a city or a county, a city or county could ban speech or therapy that helps a person transition to their new gender. So it doesn't matter which side you're on, very clearly by uh, uh, polar opposites. Right. Uh, but the point is government cannot restrict the speech even though you find it offensive, even though you find it disagreeable. So prohibiting conversion therapy bans meaning means basically that the therapists are allowed to aid pa patients with words. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. So free speech wins. Yay. Always, As always. A, the way it should be. Absolutely. It's always good. So next, on No Apologies, we are going to be talking a little bit about the direction, the drift mm -hmm. of physicians throughout the nation and whether left, right, what's happening there. And next on Beck, you've got No Filter with Debbie.